It is great to be back. Uh, President and Dr. Biden, Vice President Harris, and Second Gentleman Emhoff, uh, thank you so much for your hospitality. Uh, thanks for letting us invite a few friends to the White House. Uh, we will try not to tear up the place. Someone. <laughs> Someone once said that if you're looking for a friend in Washington, get a doll. <laughs> Our family was lucky enough to have two wonderful dogs. <laughs> but I was even luckier to have a chance to spend eight years working day and night with a man who became a true partner and a true friend. Joe, it is now America's good fortune to have you as president. You've guided us. You have guided us through some perilous times. You've built on and gone beyond the work we all did together to expand health care, to fight climate change, to advance social justice, and to promote economic fairness. Thanks to your decency and thanks to your strength. Maybe most of all, thanks to your faith in our democracy and the American people. The country's better off than when you took office, and we should all be deeply grateful for that. So thank you so much. <laughs> to all the former Obama-Biden staffers who are here in person, some of you are watching at home, thank you for being a part of this. When people ask me what I miss most about the White House years, uh, it is not Air Force One that I talk about, although I miss Air Force One. <laughs> it's the chance that I had to stand shoulder to shoulder with all of you, to have a chance to witness so many talented, selfless, idealistic, good people working tirelessly every day to make the world better. And for eight years, and even longer for some of you, I drew on your energy and your dedication and your goodness. You inspired me, and I never wanted to disappoint you. And I tried to reflect the same heart and character that you displayed every day. Even during the toughest times, it was all of you that kept me going. So it's good to be back to have a chance to see all of you and to once again say thank you. Now, as much as I miss our work together, what's been a special joy is to see what's happened since. Because so many of you are doing amazing things, whether it's in government, in the private sector, in academia, or nonprofits. And I'm especially glad to see so many of you serving President Biden as well as you serve me. Although uh, now some of you who, let's face it, you were kids back then, are now <laughs> in charge and running the show, <laughs> which is a little shocking. <laughs> and may also explain some of the gray hairs I'm seeing on some of you. Uh, but it validates what I had always hoped, which was that our time together would only be the beginning of incredibly impactful careers. And some of you who I've had a chance to stay in touch with, you know, I'm thrilled to see that 
you've started families of your own. Uh, I am a little disappointed that I haven't heard of anyone naming a kid Barack yet. <laughs> or Michelle. Or Michelle. <laughs> but there is still time. <laughs> Finally, I want to say a special thanks to the White House staff. We had a chance to <laughs> see them all before. Um, yes. Yeah. You took incredible care of our family for eight years, and along the way, you became a part of it. And uh, we have not ever forgotten uh, the kindness that you showed us. Now, uh, when Michelle and I had our portraits unveiled at the National Portrait Gallery a few years back, I said that as far as I could tell, no one in my family tree had ever sat for a portrait before. Uh, I certainly had not. Uh, and now, all of a sudden, we've done it twice. <laughs> but these portraits have a special significance because, as Joe mentioned, they will hang in the White House alongside portraits of other presidents and first ladies dating back to George and Martha. So it was important to find the right people to paint them. Uh, I want to thank Sharon Sprung for capturing everything I love about Michelle. Her grace, her intelligence, and the fact that she's fine. <laughs> um, the same. <laughs> she is. Her portrait is stunning. And I want to thank Robert McCurdy for taking on a much more difficult subject <laughs> and doing a fantastic job with mine. Uh, Robert is known for his paintings of public figures, Toni Morrison, the Dalai Lama, Nelson Mandela, Muhammad Ali. Uh, but what I love about Robert's work is that he paints people exactly the way they are, for better or worse. <laughs> he captures every wrinkle on your face, every crease in your shirt. You'll note that he refused to hide any of my gray hairs, <laughs> refused my request to make my ears smaller. <laughs> <laughs> He also talked me out of wearing a tan suit, by the way. <laughs> um, so. <laughs> His work is so precise that at first glance, it looks like a photograph. And Robert also paints his subjects looking straight ahead. So it feels like you're face to face forming a connection. And that appealed to me, in part because presidents so often get airbrushed, even take on a mythical status, especially after you've gone and people forget all the stuff they didn't like about you. <laughs> uh, but what you realize when you're sitting behind that desk and what I want people to remember about Michelle and me is that presidents and first ladies are human beings like everyone else. We have our gifts, we have our flaws. You've all experienced mine. We have good days and bad days. We feel the same joy and sadness, frustration and hope. And while it takes a certain amount of self-confidence to be president, there are nights where we lie awake wondering if this or that decision was the right one. I've always described the presidency as a relay race. You take the baton from someone, you run your leg as hard and as well as you can, and then you hand it off to someone else, knowing that your work will be incomplete. 
The portraits hanging in the White House chronicle the runners in that race. Each of us tasked with trying to bring the country we love closer to its highest aspirations. And when future generations walk these halls and look up at these portraits, I hope they get a better, honest sense of who Michelle and I were. And I hope they leave with a deeper understanding that if we could make it here, maybe they can too. They can do remarkable things too.